So I delivered a baby boy and I went to my room. They took the baby to an ICU to, you know, observe like they normally do for two, three hours. Two hours went by, three hours went by. We were really waiting for the baby to come. I was just waiting that now soon doctor will come up with the baby and will hand it over to us. But he came and he said that they might have to go uh, with the op operation procedure. And uh, it was very shocking for me. And I thought, how can this be like immediately? It's just a newborn baby. So after almost, I think, 24 hours, um, I got to meet the baby for the very first time. Um, and that was after the doctors told me that he was, uh, you know, diagnosed with Hirschsprung's disease, which is, uh, you know, something that is lifelong, uh, can be lifelong. The doctors uh, observed uh, Jonathan for about 24 hours. Um, however, his stomach was still distended. And when they did the x-ray, they found out that, you know, there was some kind of perforation or some kind of gas that was building up inside his stomach. So they had to operate him again. And that happened 24 to 48 hours later, like after the first surgery. Um, and after that, uh, we finally took him home with the stoma. So he had an open wound on his stomach where he used to pass tools from. And to care for that, we had to every hour, uh, you know, like clean that area, make sure that it was nicely covered, make sure that his skin was not getting impacted by, you know, all the acids and influx that was coming out. And I was thinking, why is it happening? What is this happening with me? And uh, these questions were there in my mind and I was thinking, is it because of my sin? Is it because of what I have done? Maybe because of those things, this is happening. So one story from the Bible I could, I was reminded of is from when people brought a blind boy before Jesus and asked him, uh, is it because of his sin or because of his parents' sin that this guy was born blind? So Jesus replied to them saying, it is not because of his sin or because of his parents and he was born blind so that the glory may go to the Lord. So almost after um, an year of his first and second surgery, one day the surgeon said that, you know, the cells are a little mature. They're not fully grown or fully mature, but if you want, we can give it a try. We can try close the ileostomy and see if he would pass tools on his own. Uh, in Osh, and we discussed and we agreed that we will go for the uh, final surgery after three days and we were not allowed to feed Jonathan uh, he was only on salines so he was you know almost felt like dehydrated he was his mouth was all dry so I kind of asked the doctors you know what is happening why you know he's still not passing stools so the senior doctors there said that you know we don't know the situation is not in our control or if we just would have to have the surgeon create the stoma again open it up and you'll have to, you know, continue taking care of the stoma. And that was a breaking point for me uh, because I told God that, Lord, I cannot take this. Like, this is not how I'm taking my baby home. When I was not getting any hope, I just called Anosh and I said that, you know, I can't take this anymore. Like, I can't hear the doctors saying that I can't take my baby without the stoma. And, um, he came, I said, you stay with the baby, I'm going to go out. So I went out and I just called a prayer line. The lady prayed for me and we agreed. And she said that, you know, as a mother, I had the authority to tell Jonathan that he was going to be okay. Next morning, 6 a.m., Jonathan passed stools. We took him home without the stoma an absolutely healed baby. So during this challenging time, many thoughts troubled me, saying, uh, you cannot do this, it's, it may not help, it will not happen, it's just going to be like this. When I started speaking the word of God over Jonathan, that started working. From my part, I had to keep worshiping, keep reading the word, keep praying every, every day continually. So when I used to get thoughts that um, it will not happen, uh, you know, I don't know that God will do it or not. Uh, is He hearing? Uh, will my son be healed? All of those thoughts that the devil would put in my mind, the only way that I had was to go back to the Word of God 
and see how good he is. If you're going through a situation like this or a tough situation, the enemy wants you to know that your father doesn't love you. He doesn't hear you. But I know, and I know because I have experienced it, that God is a good God. And nothing bad in our lives comes from above.